Hello everyone. So I welcome you to the lecture series on quantum computing. And this is the lecture number three of this series. In this lecture, we'll discuss about qubits. So what is a quantum bit? I know that you already aware with what is bit. So as we are discussing quantum computing, now we are going to deal with quantum bit. So quantum bit can be defined as a basic unit of memory that uses superposition of quantum effect entanglement that is known as entanglement to store information. So you see like bit that we used to store information in our traditional computing here in quantum computing, we use quantum bits, or that is qubit, to store information, that is quantum information. So a qubit stores the probability of information. Do remember that you are getting some new terms here, like superposition that we will discuss today's class, and entanglement that we'll discuss in some later classes. OK. These terms are very important because these are the terms that will get, that will be actually introduced in this very subject. So a qubit stores the probability of information and it represents both one and zero at the same time. I know that this definition sounds strange to you, but don't worry, in this lecture itself, everything will be clear to you, okay? So, okay, let me explain this. Now, a bit of data is represented by a single atom that is in one of the two states denoted by this zero and this one. Okay, one of them is known as ground state and another is known as excited state. And a single bit of this form is known as qubit. Now, as you are studying this quantum computing, be familiar with these two states, ground state and exciting state, okay? And try to write like this. So a single bit of this form is known as qubit. Now, a physical implementation of a qubit could use two energy levels of an atom as i have already shown you that this symbol or this state that is the excited state and a ground state that is zero we are writing like this zero this is the ground state so one exciting state and another is ground state and so a qubit could use the two energy levels of an item both the excited state and the ground state now if you want more diagram diagrammatic details of this then you can have a view or you can have a look on this diagram okay the credit goes to joseph stalmach so here you will see that this is nucleus, excited state, and this is the ground state. Okay. Now, state zero, see, and this is electron, light pulse of frequency lambda for time interval t. As it comes, so the state changes to this state. Got it? So from ground state to excited state from ground state to exciting state so i hope this diagram is now clear to you so in this diagram you can see that both the excited state and ground state is being clearly explained how the light pulse of frequency lambda for time interval t because of who is that state changes to this one okay now you see that very beginning of this lecture, I have used a term superposition, right? Superposition. So what is superposition? Actually, a single qubit can
can be forced into a superposition of two states denoted by the addition of the state vector this one alpha one this ground state plus alpha two one if i will explain this term superposition in simple words i'll just say that the composition or this combination okay the combination of these two states to form a new one so you will see this alpha one and this alpha two before this ground state and before this exciting state and we are adding them this is alpha one zero ground state and l plus alpha two excited state and because of that what we are actually getting in return is this one and you know this alpha one and alpha two they are the complex number and they satisfy the equation alpha one square plus alpha two square is equal to one so this equation this very equation actually represent what superposition so a single qubit can be forced into a superposition of two states with the help of this equation with the condition of alpha one alpha two which are complex number and alpha one square plus alpha two square is equal to one clear so do remember that do note that a qubit in superposition is in both of these excited state and zero means ground state at the same time okay i'm repeating again that in superposition a qubit can be in both of the states one and zero that is great excited state and zero that is ground state at the same time now superposition i hope this is clear and also you got that qubit can be uh, in both of the zero ground and excited state at the time of superposition. So if these things are clear to you, now I come to the very important part of this lecture, that is the difference between our traditional bit and qubit. Okay, guys, you can take screenshot of this lecture um, sequence because this will be very useful for you. So the key difference between this bit and qubit lies in the ability of a quantum state to represent many possible classical state at the same time. Just one minute before I told you that a qubit can be both in excited and, uh, state and ground state at the same time during superposition. So you see that, uh, as you know, bit can be either in zero and one. Yes, bit can be either in zero or it can be in one. But qubit can be both in ground state and excited state at the same time. So this is the key difference. That is the key difference between the two lies in the ability of a quantum state to represent many possible classical state at the same time, okay? where a classical bit can be either zero or one a quantum bit is in state in any possible combination or superposition of this zero and one with complex numbers as coefficients of the superposition i told you already that alpha one square plus alpha two square is equal to one where alpha one and alpha two are complex numbers so that is where a bit of information in classical computer can be represented by 2.0 and 0 or 1, while a qubit in a quantum computer is instead represented as any point on the surface of a 3D sphere that is known as Bloch sphere. Okay, this Bloch sphere I will explain in later classes also, but this time also you can see that this is the sphere that I am talking about. Okay, here I am representing that qubit. Okay, so now not only is qubit in be in such a uh, superposition state, but the system as a whole can be in a superposition of every combination of different states of the all qubits. Okay, so this means to say that the whole system can be super uh, in superposition of different combination of different states. So that's why quantum computer could be so immensely powerful that every possible state could be stored, processed, 
in parallel with all the others. And you know that is the magic of quantum computing. Here, everything can be done parallelly, and this power is, of course, a very intense one. Just let me give you an example. You know, the number of possible states that can be present in a superposition is very huge. If you know n qubits we have, means if you have n qubits, then there are what? Two to the power n possible state in the superposition. So if you have n qubits in return, we will have two to the power n qubits in superposition. As you know, the combination between zero, or that is ground state, and, and excited states. I know these things maybe sounds difficult for you, but you have comment section to ask me for any query or any doubt. So imagine a quantum computer with 30 qubits would have 1, 0, 70, 741, 824 possible state. How is it possible? You already get that 2 to the power n, that is 2 to the power 30, right? So if a quantum computer has 300 qubits, that would have roughly the same number of possible states as the total number of atoms in this whole known inverse. So that's the power of quantum computer. My dear friends, so I hope you got it that how powerful our quantum computer is. So this diagram, bits and qubits, you got it, zero or one, on or off, but quantum computer operations on quantum bits is zero and one, and zero, one at the same time during superposition. So qubits can take same value simultaneously. This characteristic expands the possibility of parallelism or parallel calculations. Well, that's it. That's what we have discussed in this today's class about qubit and uh, qubit superpositions topic, that is data superposition in quantum computing and the difference between bits and qubits. So let's come to the today's questions. I know you are going to answer this through comments. The first question is state, how qubit is different from bit that is how qubit differs from bit and the second question is state true or false if we have n qubits then there are two to the power two to the power n that that is state two to the power twice n possible state in the superposition you need to state true or false so guys that's all for today's lecture we'll meet in the next lecture till then take care and bye bye dr Deboy is signing out bye bye